This is going to be another question and answer. And this one's going to be about, can we know for sure that the Bible is true? Can we know for sure that God is real? Can you know? The question was on knowing versus believing. And he used the verse in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. So the question is, since we can't see God, can we say that we know God and that the Bible are real just because we have faith that it is? Is faith in it enough to say that we know it? And I understand what he means, but the question is it one of those kind, kind of questions that just messes with your mind. So I'll, I'll try to answer the question the best way I know how. He uses the example that he only says God is real according to the Bible. When he tells somebody, when he's witnessing to him, he only says, we know that God is real according to the Bible. So he's saying he believes God is real because the Bible says that it's so. Therefore, he says he can only accept it by faith and doesn't know for certain or that he can't proclaim that he knows that it's real. Okay, so my quick answer to that is the fact that the Bible says that God is real and that all this stuff we believe and teach is real, that's enough for me to know for certain that God is real and pro be able to proclaim it as that the thing is so, regardless of what anybody or anything may say otherwise. My faith in God in the Bible isn't a hope so but rather a no-so. But there are other reasons why I believe God and the Bible are real. So even though we operate by faith and not by sight according to 2 Corinthians 5-7, we can know things for sure. What I'm trying to say is, I don't believe there is an if. And I know the guy who asked the question doesn't really believe that there is an if. He's a soul winner, and I don't think someone is going to spend that much time winning souls and reading the Bible if they don't really know that it's real. Because there are all kinds of Christians that know that God is real, and they believe the Bible is real, no ifs or buts about it, but they don't hit a lick at a snake for God. So I know somebody who's a soul winner and reads the Bible consistently they believe that it's real. They know that it's real, even though they may get confused sometimes. But I try to stay away from any if in regards to God or the Bible being real. You could go on forever with ifs. For example, if I believe I'm saved, so if I say I'm saved if God is real, and that is if the Bible is right and if it doesn't have errors, so if all of it is real, then I'll be going to heaven if you really go to heaven when you die. You see, it just the ifs keep going on forever. I believe the Lord wants you to know that it's real, wants you to know certain things. Even though we're saved by faith, we don't see things with our eyes. I got enough faith to know that it's real. For example, Jesus is our blessed hope, but it is a hope as in I know so and not as in I hope so. If there is an if, then I'm just a betting man. I'm just betting on it. Uh, but God is real. If the Bible is right. But I know the Bible is right. So I know God is real. God is true according to the Bible. But I believe the Bible. And I know the Bible is right. Most people don't believe the Bible. And they don't know that it's right. So my reasons for believing in God would not be accepted by the lost world. Their final authority is their self. Or nothing. And my final authority is the Bible. With two so very different authorities, it would be almost impossible to come to an agreement. One guy told me, if you believe it, then it's real. But if you don't believe it, then it's not real. But that's crazy. That's a crazy way of thinking. It don't work that way. That's what parents tell their kids about Santa. But it don't work that way. God is real whether you believe it or not. The Bible is right whether you believe it or not. But there are things you can know for certain. The Apostle John says in 1 John 5, 13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. So you're believing on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So you can know for sure. 
The Bible lets you know things for sure. You can know for sure that you have eternal life. Now that is enough evidence for us as believers to know and be able to proclaim it as true and that we do know for sure. Even though that may not be good enough for the lost world. There's going to be things that aren't good enough for the lost world. But it doesn't matter because their opinion does not matter. Another way I know for sure God is real and that the Bible is real is because the Holy Spirit in me lets me know. In Romans 8, 16, it says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. But the lost world would say that is only in my head or that I'm just superstitious. But like I said, my reasons may not be good enough evidence to the lost world, but it is for me. Another way I know God is real is by the complete change of my desires and mind at salvation and after spending time in the Word of God. It was supernatural. Now, you'll have men out there that don't believe in the supernatural, and these answers will not be good enough for them. Because 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Now, the apostle Peter lived in a time when they operated by sight. He saw Jesus Christ. He saw miracles. He saw the Mount of Transfiguration. He saw things with his own eyes. He was operating by sight. But he still made this great statement in his epistle. In 2 Peter 1.19, he says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Peter believed the words of God was a more sure word of prophecy that was better and more sure than actually seeing the thing for yourself. Peter believed the word of God was more sure than all the things he saw with his own two eyes when he walked and talked with Jesus, when he did miracles, and all the things in the book of Acts. So even though I accept by faith what the Bible says, it's been made so real to me that I know it's real, and I believe I can proclaim it to be true because it's a more sure word of prophecy. It's better than seeing it with your eyes. The complete word of God that we have is more sure than if an angel appeared to you tonight face to face and gave you things from the Bible. Paul knew for certain that it was real. In 2 Timothy 1.12, he says, For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. So Paul knew who he believed. He knew jesus christ and he was fully persuaded the fact that christians will face true persecution like paul and suffer for the word of god like paul shows that they know that it's real because they would go through all that torment they're not going to go through all that for something that they don't know for sure abraham was fully persuaded about god giving him a seed that would outnumber the stars in romans 4 20 through 21 it says he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to god and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform he was fully persuaded in what god said now i can look at it the other way too there is a difference between us and them because they both saw things that we won't see in this life until the rapture Paul was caught up to the third heaven. He saw heaven. Abraham saw angels. God talked audibly to Abraham. But it goes back to what Peter said. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Abraham didn't have a Bible. Uh, so now, once again, I don't deny the fact that it does come right down to faith. I don't believe all these things I believe because I can see it with my own two eyes. I've got a Bible. The Holy Spirit's in me. And Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We base all these things we believe off the Bible itself, and it's because we have faith in it. I'll never be able to give evidence that would cause the lost world to say I have true evidence. And really, when they discover things like Noah's Ark, this doesn't increase my faith. I'm not, losing, I'm not basing my faith on finding physical things like that. I'm, I'm not basing my faith on finding the Ark of the Covenant or something like that. God has given man enough to show that he's real to the point that they are without excuse for not believing that he's real and to the point that they are a fool for not believing that he's real. Psalm 14, 1 says, The fool has said in his heart there is no God. Romans 1, 20 says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse.
for everything that we can't see and yet we have faith in it there is a visible representation of it the greatest example is the sun jesus is actually called the son of righteousness in the book of malachi the sun rises the lord jesus christ rose from the dead the sun shines and brings light jesus shines and brings light the sun is called a star and jesus is the bright and morning star so you have a visible representation of something that makes the lost world without excuse there's something that you can see that represents something that you can't see just how nature works, the different kinds of animals, the miracle of childbirth. So many things had to happen for you to be born, and God also had to make man and woman have all the body parts needed to cause a child to be born. It's endless. You see the handprint of God in everything to the point that the lost world is completely without excuse. Also, a man's conscience makes him be without excuse. God puts his law in people's heart, and that is how deep down they know there is a God, and they know that there is right and wrong. And the fact that people have a sense of duty to do something shows that God is real. When an atheist is dying, there has to be something in him that wonders about God, and if all this is real. That's in the Bible. With all this being said, I believe that if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you are trusting in him to be your crucified, bread and risen Savior, then you do know that it's real. I don't believe you really separate the two. The Word of God says it's true. The creation says it's true. The Holy Spirit in you says that it's true. These questions are mind benders, questions that will pop up in our mind as Christians. There's another question that goes around that says, how do I know if I really believed or if I believed enough? But if you look at Romans 10, 13 through 14, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How would you have called on him out of a sincere heart if you didn't believe? So how much do you need to believe or how much faith does it take to be saved? Enough to call on him. That's it. It's so simple. We know the sinner's prayer isn't what saves, but a person believes in their heart to salvation. I did pray the night I got saved. It wasn't the prayer that saved me. It was what had taken place in my heart before I even said the prayer. And the belief in the Bible and in God that I have is what causes me to know for a fact that it's real, even though the answers I give for it being real could never satisfy an atheist or a good portion of the lost world. So how much do I know that it's real enough to base my eternal soul on it? The devil puts thoughts in your mind many times and says, how do you know all this is even real? That is something every Christian will face. You'll face thoughts like that from the devil and devils, and you just have to just keep going and forget about it. But you only think that for a few minutes, and when you're right back on serving the Lord, I mean, it's something that only attacks for a few minutes. You just have to keep going. When the doubts come, realize, realize it's from the devil. That is the first thing he did to Eve was cast out on the word of God. He said, thou shalt not surely die. He cast out on the word of God. The best thing to do when in doubt is to pull the book out. When the devil says stuff, throw the book at him. And Romans ten seventeen says, for So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. What you have is a Bible, and if I have faith in it, then that faith causes me to know that it's real. But it, even if I have lost faith in it, it would still be real. 2 Timothy 2, 13 says, If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. No one has ever proved the Bible wrong. They prove it right for even trying to prove it wrong. And you can see the scripture being fulfilled. The men of the Bible always spoke in a way that showed that they knew it was real. In Matthew 24, when Jesus is describing the end, he said, These things must come to pass. I believe the Lord would have us speak in a way that shows we know that it's real. Some lost people listen to preachers because even though they may not believe it, they can tell that preacher believes it and knows that it's real. Paul proclaims the Bible to be holy. He's very bold in his beliefs about the word. He knows that it's real. He knows that it's true and holy.